By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have something different, something special for you guys, because we're going to look at old school magic brawl. Exactly, I said brawl. Maybe you're wondering, what is that? I have no idea. Well, actually, brawl is the same as EDH, but only with 60 cards. So you play with 59 cards and one commander. And maybe you're wondering, what is a commander? Well, a commander basically is in your command zone and you can cast it whenever. You know what, I'll explain all that during the actual match. And actually, if you wanna know more about that, you can also read the description below, find out all the ins and outs uh, there is to know and learn about old school Brawl. All I can say is that it is a pretty entertaining format and we played a whole tournament. And this is actually the first match that I played in my group stages. And um, I will be posting more content from this Brawl tournament all the way to the final. So if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, Ring that bell because um, I will probably show more games, more matches from this tournament, like I said, all the way to the finals. And in this matchup, we're going to see my deck. My commander is a Nebu Nebuchadnezzar, and that means I'm playing with black and with blue. And my opponent, man, he's got the coolest commander of them all. He's playing with Nicol Bolas. So that is, I mean, the elder dragon, the big man. So that means he's playing with uh, black, with blue, and with red. So I'm really looking forward to this matchup. Both of these decks are powered, so that's gonna be, we're gonna see some fireworks. I think we're both playing with Mind Twist. It's pretty nasty, it's pretty nasty. You know what, let me just, uh, oh wait, before I go to the deck tech, let me just first tell you that, like, as always, if you wanna skip the deck tech section or you, know, you just wanna see specific parts of the video, the best thing you can do is check the description below. There you will find several timestamps explaining what is what and, and, and when is what. Um, so there's a timestamp called MTG Games. Click on there, that will take you straight to the actual games. And here we are going to continue with the deck tech. And I think I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent. Let's look at Nicol Bolas. And here we see the deck of my opponent, or actually not the deck, we see seven cards out of his deck. Uh, my opponent, by the way, is Bernard. Bernard, thank you for playing this match. Unfortunately, I don't have his deck photo, but I do have kind of an idea of the deck, and I'd like to share a few cards with you to give you an idea. Now, first off, in Brawl, it's a singleton format, right? So that means that you can only play with one of each card of all the 59 cards in his deck, with the exception for Basic Lance. And uh, I think the first two cards after Nicol Bolas are kind of a nice... Uh, give you a nice idea of what his deck wants to do. He actually wants to do a lot with card draw and, and, and punish you for drawing cards and also for not having enough cards in hand, which is kind of an interesting combination. So the first card I'd like to highlight is this card that's very rare. You don't see it often. It's Storm World. It's from Legends 1 Red. I love the fact that you're playing with this, Bernard. Uh, it's an enchant world and it reads, if any player has less than four cards in hand at the end of his or her upkeep, Storm World does one damage to that player for each card less than four. So it's kind of a the wreck, but then it works for both sides. So also for Bernard, but also for me, his opponent. And the cool thing is he's also playing with Underworld Dreams, right? Underworld Dreams enchantment from Legends, three black to cast. And that reads for every card that your opponent draws, he takes the damage. So when both of these cards are on the battlefield, you know, the, it's really hard for the opponent because on one hand, I don't want to draw into any more cards because I take more damage from the Underworld Dreams. On the other side, I want to make sure my hand is nice and full or else I take damage from the Storm World. And I'm sure, Bernard, you're also playing a Black Vice somewhere in there, so that can get really, really nasty. And then, of course, he's got some draw sevens in there, including the Time Twister, another card that you see here on this picture. He's also playing with some Red Burn, of course, Disintegrate, but also Fireball. He's playing with Neverneural's Disc, which I think is a really important sweeper when you're playing with these colors because you don't have a weapon um, for enchantments. So just for your enchantment removal alone, you kind of need your Neverneural's Disc, right? You cannot always count on blue to counter away your problems. So it's good to have a disc. Now this is kind of the, the cards, the things that I want to show you about Bernard's deck. It's just a really strong and cool deck. Like I said, unfortunately, I don't have a deck photo to show you, but you know, things will get uh, more clear as the match will evolve. You know, he's playing with, you know, Control Magic, he's playing with Surrender Perfreed, he's playing with Terror, he's playing with Sorcerer's Queen. So just a lot of cool cards in here to see when the match starts. So this is what I can share with you uh, about the deck of Bernard. Now let's go to my deck. Let's take a look at my Nebu build.
And here we see my deck that's actually called Nebuchadnezzar's Apprentice. And there is a really nice flavor story. Well, actually, I mean, I made it, so I'm saying it's nice, but it's up to you to decide. But anyway, there's a link probably popping up right now. Uh, if you want, you can click on it. It's also in the description below, so you can just, you know, check it out later if you're interested. And it tells the story of this deck because Nebu is actually getting caught up in a wizard's battle. And to make a long story short, he finds out that he doesn't have as much power as he used to to draw mana out of the land so he's getting kind of concerned so he's looking for an apprentice that he can basically abuse right and that's how he runs into the apprentice wizard and that's why the deck's called nebuchadnezzar's apprentice so as you can see it's obviously black and it's blue and it is a pretty powerful deck it is really 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 powerful in terms of it's got some of the most powerful cards in the game of magic right you see ancestral recall you see time walk you see Mind Twist, a Brain Geyser, uh, it's got a Mox in there. Uh, I'm playing with some, you know, nasty little creatures like I'm not Spectre. I've got Control Magic, which is really good in a singleton format. So it is a flavor deck on one side, but it's also just a really nasty deck. I didn't hold back. But what I did want to do is, and maybe when you're looking at it, you're already seeing little combos. So I always like to integrate little traps, as I call them, little ideas in the deck. For example, I've got Royal Assassin and Icy Manipulator in this deck. You know, that's really an old-fashioned combo that's just a lot of fun to play with. I also kind of feel that when you're playing with Nebuchadnezzar, you kind of have to play with a, a discard theme. So I kind of went for that. So that's why I'm playing Mind Twist. I'm also playing Disrupting Scepter. I find Disrupting Scepter and Apprentice Wizard is just really cool because of the art and, of course, Apprentice Wizard, one blue and tap for three generic mana. So you can use those generic mana to use your Disrupting Scepter. So I'm really hoping for those kind of shenanigans. You know, your Apprentice Wizard wants to use the artifacts and kind of goof around with them. Talking about that, I think Apprentice Wizard and Basalt Monolith also go together really well. And I'm playing with Power Monolith in this deck as well uh, because I'm playing with Power Artifact and Basalt Monolith, right? So if I can manage to put my Power Artifact on my Basalt Monolith, I will be able to get unlimited amounts of power and then uh, of mana, sorry, which equals power, I guess. And then I can use that mana to build a huge rocket launcher and kind of blast away my opponent, right? So that is a way to victory. Another way to victory, talking about that, is I'm playing with Millstone, which is kind of nasty because my opponent, you know, in Singleton, you can only play with 59 cards, which is not a lot. So I can use my millstone to kind of kill my opponent while I control the board. The main idea of the deck basically is really heavy, heavy on control. So I want to use my Nebu. I want to use my discard magic uh, to make sure that my opponent has no cards in hand. And then in an ideal situation, I will also have my Field of Dreams card. So that's an enchant world from Legends for one. That reads, players play with the top card of their libraries revealed, right? So I can see the first card of my opponent. And then if it's a good card or, you know, a land when he needs land, I can use my millstone to mill that away. And I'm also playing with animate dead. So maybe if it's a really good creature, I can then animate it for myself. So, you know, there's a lot of nastiness in this deck, you know. Um, and at the same time, it is a little bit like a toothless tiger because I'm not playing with saying your vampire, um, you know, phantom monster, air elemental. Those are cards you usually see in the singleton format. Like my big... Beef Boy, I guess, is my Moti Jin because he's just too cool not to play. But my main idea behind this deck, I really wanted it to be about Nebu. And I kind of feel like Nebu is also a wizard. And, and, and it's a wizard is kind of like, it's, it's about control, like controlling the field. And I also feel that, you know, blue and black, or especially blue, of course, are a bit more about control. So I really went heavy with that uh, with that theme. So yeah, this is my deck. Again, if you want to see the lore story, uh, you can check the description below where you can find the link or just click on the info card. Um, it's it's really entertaining to see if you like if you like lore and the idea of creating a story with your deck. So it's it's not just a, a bunch of cards. No, it's a story that your deck tells. You know, if that's something you enjoy, you might like uh, the story that I made for this deck. Okay, enough about my build. We've already looked at some of the cards that Bernard has in his uh, deck. By the way, and now why I'm saying this to you, Bernard also plays Power Artifact and Basil Monolith. But then he packs it with a Fireball. So that's a little bit more dangerous. So hopefully for me, he cannot assemble those pieces. So uh, you know what? Let's go to the match and let's find out. Let's go to game number one. Game number one, here we go. I'm sitting on the right with the Procol Sorcerer playmat and my opponent Bernard sitting on the left. He's on the play, starting with a Sol Ring. That is a really sweet start for him. 
and there is a swamp and there's a mock sapphire so i can't complain as well not a play unfortunately demonic tutor would have been nice oh look at that surrender a freed so that's punishment turn two quick response with a terror getting rid of the surrender and no land drop by bernard so he probably really went for the soul ring and then to play with the surrender and this is an interesting move from my part because i'm playing a disrupting scepter i think the better play would have been to do a strip mine and strip away that land to be honest and there is a mishra's factory coming from bernard let's take a look what can i do probably going to activate the strip mine here or am i low on mana as well that could be the case that's always been kind of difficult are you going to sack your strip mine in this case and it looks like i'm not Ooh, playing a mind twist instead that is kind of nasty and i still wonder isn't it just better to strip? I think I'm really low on lands, and that's why I haven't used to strip mine yet. Ooh, two very powerful cards getting uh, discarded there by Bernard. A control magic and a mana drain. And especially that control magic is just huge. And he's not attacking, actually, with the Mishra's factory. That kind of surprises me, because uh, I was tapped out completely. So he could have just attacked me for two, dropped me to 18, decided not to. Maybe he missed it. Let's see what I can do now. And I'm really kind of, you can see me. Okay, wow, playing a Demonic Tutor, not using the Strip Mine. Probably gonna go for Ancestral Recall. It's the boring thing to do, but it is probably the right thing to do here because I'm low on lands. I really just need more cards and hopefully I can draw into some mana. And I'm just hoping to cast that Nebu and of course use my Disrupting Scepter as well. And exactly, yeah, that's gonna be the Ancestral Recall and of course, there's always a chance that Bernard maybe has a Power Sink or a Spell Blast, but I guess I'm still lucky. And you can see that thumbs up by Bernard. He's like, you know, it is what it is. And I'm playing a Swamp into a Soul Ring. Okay, so finally I found some uh, some ways to get mana. Passing turn, he quickly passed it back to me, and now I'm finally using the Strip Mine. And I just kind of feel for Bernard because he's just not drawing any lands. And when you don't draw lands in Magic, there's not much you can do. Playing my Nebu, so it's also a 3-3 creature. And of course, I can start using its ability, which is tap an X. And I have to name a card, and I can see X cards of the opponent's hand. And if it's the card that I've named, I can then, he then has to discard it. So now I'm using Nebuchadnezzar, probably saying a land or something. And there are some notes being taken. That's looking pretty uh, professional. Oh, actually, no, he's, he's looking up the card. <laughs> so it's at random. And let's see what cards he's going to show. So we see Dark Ritual. Wow, this is a good hand. Man, I'm lucky that Bernard doesn't have um, that he doesn't have a land. Oh man, if he just draws into a swamp, he can start casting Dark Ritual and Mind Twist, and he can just twist away my entire hand here. Passing turn. If he's gonna find a swamp, he can get back into this game. Unfortunately for him, he's not finding it, and I'm using it again now, tapping for five, and I'm probably saying Mind Twist so that he has to discard his Mind Twist. So Mind Twist is gone. And now I'm using my Disrupting Scepter. No, I don't have enough mana, unfortunately, but I wanted to make sure that I would hit the Mind Twist. And now he finds Dark Ritual into Underworld Dreams, so he finds that Felwer Stone. So I'm really happy I took care of that Mind Twist, taking a damage on 19. And here you can kind of see one of the problems with my deck. So I'm drawing like crazy. I'm having control. Bernard is not drawing anything. You know, he's not drawing any lands. And still, I haven't been able to deal any damage. I mean, his hand is now empty. He's playing an underground sea, attacking me for two, but I'm actually on 17. I'm lower than Bernard. Now I'm on 16. But it's looking really good for me, of course. But I'll have to put something on the table. I can attack here with Nebu, of course, deal three points of damage. That's probably what I'm going to do. Remember, I also have the Disrupting Scepter. I can use kind of forcing Bernard to play out his hand all the time, which is super annoying. And it looks like I'm going to cast something here. Is it going to be... Oh, it's going to be a brain, guys. Ooh, going to take a lot of damage, though, from the Underworld Dreams. Dropping to 12. That is kind of risky. So I wonder if maybe I'm keeping the Nebu on blocking duty, finding a Felwer Stone, and passing turn here. Wow. So despite... I mean, I'm doing a lot of stuff, and I've discarded his entire hand, but I'm not really winning, am I? I mean, I'm winning in terms of... I'm really ahead on board in cards. There we see... There we see a Will-O-The-Wisp, which is actually a pretty good blocker. I'm going to go to 10. That's super annoying. That means I cannot attack with my Nebu. 
What can I do here? Tapping four, and I'm gonna control magic the willow because then I can use the willow to possibly block the factory. But now the question is, am I gonna attack? It looks like I am gonna attack. So he can block on his Mishra, but then you have to pump it and trade places. And I can just recast my Nebu again because I've got enough mana. So I think this is a good move. Tapping three, casting an Apprentice Wizard. So I've got Apprentice Wizard and Disrupting Scepter on the board. So that's kind of cool. That's what I wanted. And I'm pointing it out as well. So both um, cards have the same artist, Dan Frazier, and the same background of the Moxon. And there I'm playing a Rocket Launcher and Passing Turn. The fact, the fact though is, I mean, it's starting to look really good for me. It already did, but I'm on 11. Demonic Tutor, I wonder what he's going to tutor for. What is he going to do? Maybe also an Ancestral Recall? Ooh, what he could do? Yeah, of course! He's going to do a Time Twister. Ho -ho! Oh, man, that means I'm going to take 7 damage. I'm going to drop to 4. Oh, man. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad. I'm dropping to four. Oh my God. Can you imagine Bernard is not finding anything and still I'm on four? If he's got a burn spell in hand, he can kill me next turn. I'm just gonna die. This is insane. What a ridiculous game. And this is why in old school, always just keep playing. Even if your heart, your, your cards are gone, your opponent has more lands than you, whatever, just keep playing. Things can always turn out for the better. Playing a Chaos Orb here, that's not really going to help me. Well, I can flip on the Underworld Dreams, I guess. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not even going to wait. Going to flip on it. Maybe I'm afraid if I do it in his turn that he's found a Shatter or something that he can take care of, um, of my Chaos Orb in, in some way when I activate it. So now I'm using the Apprentice Wizard for my Disrupting Scepter, I guess. No, I'm not. I'm going to use the Nebu. First, I'm going to have a look at his hand to see if it's dangerous. Ooh, Fireball! I have to get rid of that Fireball now. Can I get rid of the Fireball? I don't think I can. Okay, I'm taking an extra turn with the Time Walk. Now I have to name Fireball so I can save myself. So I'm going to untap. Now I just have to mention Fireball. Drawing a card here. Let's see what I'm going to do. So I'm tapping and I guess I'm going to name... Oh, I'm naming Mind Twist? Why am I naming Mind Twist? He can kill me with Fireball. What's going on here? I should have used the Scepter first, by the way. That's another mistake. This is a huge mistake. Or do I have a counter spell to take care of the Fireball? But that's a huge risk. If he can encounter my counter spell... Okay, playing a Demonic Tutor. Am I going to look up for another counter spell? Man, I think, yeah, I mean, Mind Twist is a problem, right? But Fireball can kill me. So why not deal with the Fireball, keep, a, keep my Counterspell in hand for the Mind Twist? This is just really stupid. Okay, he's going to cast Fireball, right? I assume I've got a Counterspell. But look at this man, he's got two blue open. Oh, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. This is so stupid. Oh, Bernard, man. You deserve this victory because I just played this so dumb. So dumb. So dumb. And compliments to you for just sticking in there, uh, you know, tutoring for your, uh, your time twister, finding, of course, your time twister with the tutor and playing it out. That was just brilliant. Dropped me to four and then it was under full pressure and uh, absolutely fantastic. Well done. But this is kind of hard for myself to look back at because this is a huge mistake from my part. And this kind of shows my, I wouldn't say fear, but as soon as I see a mind twist in somebody's hand and I can discard the mind twist, that's what I go, go for. Even though I play it myself in this deck, I'm like, I've got so many bad memories of the card. I'm like, he's got a mind twist. Get rid of the mind twist. We'll deal with the fireball later. But that was obviously... A huge, huge mistake from my part. Anyway, Bernard, man, wow, you've won this one, but it's just the first game. So uh, we're now going to shuffle up again and we're going to start with game number two. Game number two, here we go. So let's see if I can use my brain for this one. Oh, it looks like my opponent is, is bailing on me here. Played an island, tapped the island. Let's wait for Bernard to return. Okay, he's back, putting the headphone back on. Okay, we're back in game. 
It's like, okay, uh, we see a glasses of Urza. Okay, that's pretty cool, actually. Glass of Urza and Nebu work together really well. Glass of Urza, I can tap to kind of look at the hand of Bernard. So he's showing his hand right now. And then as soon as I have Nebu on the battlefield, I can use Nebu's ability, name a card, and because of the Glass of Urza, I know what cards he's got in hand. His hand looked pretty good, by the way. Playing a Swamp, and there is a Demonic Tutor. I wonder what I'm going to look for. And I guess if you're Bernard, you're going to hope you can somehow cast that Wheel of Fortune. Because then I'm going to lose the card that I'm going to look up right now. Which is probably an Ancestral Recall, which is again a boring choice. Or am I going for something more spicy? Anyway, shuffling up. Putting the Tutor in my graveyard. And there we see Bernard playing an island and passing turns. So I want to see his hand again. That anime dead, control magic, very, very strong card. So he's just leaving it open right now. Thank you, Bernard. It's just kind of easier because I'm just going to look at it anyway. Yeah, there's the Ancestral Recall. Okay, we know that play. Let's see what I can do now. And he's pointing at the wreck, which is, yeah, definitely useless at this point at least. And look at that playing a Millstone. So Millstone artifact from the Antiquities. And uh, I can pay two to let him um, to mill two cards of his library or my own, actually. You can also mill yourself, which in some circumstances could be useful. And of course, I'm hoping maybe, well, if I mill a creature on his side, he can use his anime dead. So I, I don't know if Millstone is really a good card in this scenario. I wonder what I'm going to do. Hoping to find some more lands, of course, to get my Nebu out as quickly as possible to start using my Glass of Urza and Nebu combo. Looking at my hand, I guess I don't have a land or else I would have played it. Really kind of stuck. Okay, I do have a land. That's good. Playing a Basalt Monolith. That means next turn I can cast my Nebuchadnezzar. And okay, there we see a Gem de Tome. And again, he's showing his card. So he also has that Basalt Monolith. And I guess what I really want to do is maybe get rid of the Anime Dead, perhaps Wheel of Fortune. He's just got a lot of targets. So now I'm playing Nebu. Of course, it has Summoning Sickness still. And I'm going to take care of one of his lands, trying to slow him down. Now he can no longer play his Control Magic. And I'm playing a Time Walk, taking an extra turn. Ooh, this is a big deal. Because that means I can use Nebu straight away. So untapping my lands. Of course, Basil Monolith remains tapped. I can use Nebu. He's got five in hand, remember. It's a random effect. I've got five mana as well, so I can just... Select a card to discard from his hand. And it looks like... I guess I would go for Animate Dead? Wheel of Fortune, okay. Well, a wheel is a way for him to get out of it, but... Oh, drawing another seven. That is justice, Bernard. That is justice. It's good that you do this. Because I'm letting you discard a Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is too cool to be discarded. So shame on me. So thank you, Bernard, for uh, punishing that move. And that Time Twister, what a great card that is. And he's playing his land for turn. Let's see what else he can do. Maybe a Bolt. Oh, there's Storm World. So that's a card I discussed in the deck deck. So Storm World is basically a direct, but it works on both sides. It's an Enchant World from Legends for one red. It's really cool. Beautiful art as well, I believe, by Christopher Rush. And using my glasses again to look at his hand. There is that Counterspell in hand. I probably want to take care of the Counterspell first. Is he going to... Oh, he doesn't have land. He cannot counter anyway. So playing that Mox Sapphire. And is that a fork in hand? That other one, the red one. A Willow, a fork, and a Mana Drain, and two more lands. Of course, I'm going to use it for five. And I'm going to let him discard his island. Okay. That's kind of mean. I wonder why I did that. He's got enough lands. I don't want him to have two blue. Why not? That's a big question here. Playing a Willow to Wisp. And I'm going to play a Counterspell on the Willow. Interesting choice. And I'm, I'm not really sure. I guess I'm countering it because I'm thinking I have to kill him with my Nebu and it's a good blocker. Would that be my reasoning? I'm going to use it again. I mean, please take that Mana Drain. Of course, with the island, he couldn't play the Mana Drain anymore. So I guess I guess that's, that, that's a good point. Again, taking the land. And playing Azur Drake. 
I think I would have taken the fork here, to be honest. I mean, he's got a lot of lands. I do understand with Jam Day Tom and the lands, I, I, I get that. And that island maybe was a good play because then he kind of cast a mana drain. But I think the mana denial plan is not really going to work at this point. So he's going to take a damage from his own Storm World. So actually, Storm World works really well with my Nebu. And of course, he's showing the combination. Oh, that's cool, of course. Nico Bolas and Storm World. Oh, man. Such a bad player. Of course, that is the coolest combo. You want to discard the hand of the opponent and you've got your Storm World. Oh, there, that is cool. The Wheel of Fortune's back, baby. And there he shows what he discards. He found a hippie. So we're drawing new hands. We're pretty high on life totals still. There is a City of Brass from Bernard. And of course, I'm using a really nice altered City of Brass. And uh, then I'm using, of course, my Glasses of Urza to check his hand. What has he got? He's got a lot of lands. Ooh, yeah, Power Artifact and a Fireball. So if he can find a Basil Monolith, I'm toast. I am toast. I guess he's passing turn. I've got a full hand, so it's still looking pretty good for me. And I'm untapping. Now we kind of have to remember what he had in hand here. Let's see. So just this deck takes a lot of thinking. When you're watching this game, it probably looks really easy, right? Because I'm just tapping, saying, blah, blah, blah. But trust me, when you're playing with this, it, j it takes a lot of time. So I'm going to pick the Fireball. I think that's a good decision. Although, Anime Dead, I don't even know what's in the bin on his side. Attacking for two here. I mean, isn't Anime Dead a good decision, or do I have a reason not to take the Anime? Playing an Underworld, uh, sorry, a Field of Dreams here, not an Underworld Dreams, but Field of Dreams, so we're playing with our, uh, the first card of our deck open. And I wonder, I mean, he's got the Jam Day Tome, it works kind of nice with the Tome for him. And, ooh, Power Artifact, that means it's much cheaper for him to use it. And milling away a couple of cards, so now he can use a Gemini Tome just to pay two with a power artifact on it. That is pretty sweet. At least I'm dealing a little bit of damage with the Azure Drake, but I mean, I think the biggest problem of my deck is I've got control, but I need to take more advantage of that control. And here we see that Willow being brought back by the anime dead. And I think, yeah, perhaps I should have taken the anime dead because I'm pretty high on life. So I think that would have been a better option. My Basil is still tapped at the moment. Tapping a, a single blue. Okay, finding Ancestral Recall. I really kind of complain about all the power that I'm drawing in these games. It's kind of insane, so I have to show it because of Field of Dreams. Not really finding anything too useful. And tapping four cards. Okay, Control Magic. <laughs> this is really ridiculous. Oh, so that's probably why I didn't take the anime dead, because they had a Control Magic anyway. So I'm like, you waste your anime dead, and then I can use my control. So now I'm attacking with both. I'm not even trying to make him discard any cards with Nebu anymore. So he's on 12, and on the end step, of course, he's going to use um, his Gem Detome. Look at that. Now he finds his Basil Monolith, but of course his Power Artifact is already... On the Gem Day Tome, does he have an enchantment alteration? That would be super cool. Listen, Bernard, if you can win by playing Basil Monolith enchantment alteration and then, I don't care, play Disintegrate or something, then it's, it's you, you should win. That's a Timmy way, I guess. And I'm going to mill away that Dreams or not. I guess I'm not. I'm going to allow him to have the Dreams. And then we're going to tell him to... Okay, it's kind of unclear. Okay, he was showing it because I was using my Glass of Urza. And I mean, I'm still in 20. I'm not really afraid of the Underworld Dreams at this moment. I think I should just swing in for 5. Right, because then he's going to drop to 7. He's like on a 2-turn clock. Okay, but instead... Is this a good move? I guess it's a good move, because then I can put him on 10 and he's still on a 2-turn clock. So that kind of makes sense. Oh, this is nasty. I'm stealing his Power Artifact GM Day Tome. Oh, Bernard, man. This deck that I'm playing is just really nasty. 
And now I'm thinking what was in his hand again. I think I forgot. I had so much stuff going on. I think I forgot. And I'm going to mail away his control magic and his royal assassin. I'm going to attack him for two. He's going to go to 10. There's a lot of stuff happening here. He's going to take damage from his own enchantment there. He's got a dark ritual. Okay. He's playing a Darylor. Oh, he's not. He's making a different decision. It's always scary when your opponent is, draw, is, is counting the lands. He's going to go to eight. Oh, Nicol Bolas. That is actually pretty good because it means I can no longer attack. That is a pretty good move. I wonder what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm gonna, just going to untap. I guess I still got to untap my Azur Drake, sorting my lands, trying to kind of get an overview of the situation here. Wow. What am I going to do against the dragon? Looking at my hand, I mean, I can draw extra cards at least with the gem they told. I'm going to look at his hand just as a Darylor. I guess I could take care of the Darylor. It's kind of annoying, so I'm doing that. So he's discarding Darylor. I can use the gem they told him to draw another card, but I can just do that on end step. I've just got a swamp there on the top, so it's not really going to make a big difference, so I might as well wait for his end step. Playing a Mishra's Factory. I could somehow try to do an Alpha Strike, tapping four. Okay, there's a Rocket Launcher. This is really good. There's a trick with Rocket Launcher, because under the new rules, Rocket Launcher reads, after you've activated it, it gets destroyed at the beginning of the next end step. So that means if I use it on the end step of the end step of my opponent, I can still use it in my own turn before it gets destroyed. So I can basically use it twice. So that is something that I can do now as well. But remember, Rocket Launcher has to be in the game for at least one full turn. And I'm pointing at my Rocket Launcher. It looks like I'm going to use it on his end step. So I'm going to put him on four. So the Rocket Launcher is still there. So I'm doing that end step trick. And I mean, if you're Bernard, you kind of know what's coming, right? I mean, this has got to be a 1-1. One -one. I can just use my Rocket Launcher now to deal the final points of damage. And uh, yeah, that's it. You know, I'm going to use the Rocket Launcher again. And, and that's it. Bernard goes down from 4-0. to zero. But what I noticed again in this game, it is so hard for my deck to, after I got all that advantage, card advantage, to really, you know, push through and deal damage. Anyway, I've got this one. It's 1-1. One, one, and that means we're going into a game a number three. Game number three. Here we go. It's 1-1. One, one. Bernard's on the play. Let's go. There's the Swamp. Who's going to win this one? Island. So this is the first match in the group stages of the Brawl Tournament. And the nice thing is, next week I'll be showing you another match, not uh, with me in it, but just two other players, two complete new decks. So if you enjoy Brawl, old school, stick around. There we see a Sorcerer's Queen being played by Bernard. Really cool creature. It's originally from the Arabian Nights expansion. This is from Revised. It's a 1-1 creature for 2 black and 1, and you can tap it to make target creature an 0-2. There we see an attack by the Sorcerer's Queen. That's pretty cool. You don't see that often. Dropping to 19, playing a Swamp here. And there's a Glasses of Urza. So again, I've got Glass of Urza and Nebu. I've got that strategy going. There is a Mox Sapphire. Four cards in hand and passing turn. There is a Mishra's Factory. There is a Nevenerals Disc. Doesn't look very scary yet, the disc. Kind of annoying. Okay, I am countering it. There is another attack, and I'm using the glasses. Maybe it would have been better to first use the glasses and then counter. Man, I'm just playing super sloppy uh, in this match. But okay, let's see what's happening next. Playing a Tolaria, and now I can cast... Oh, casting an Icy Manipulator. I want to say now I can cast a Nebu. Deciding not to, though, and passing turn. And tapping the Mistress Factory. Again, a decision that I'm not really happy with. I could have just waited for him to animate the factory and then tap it. And there we see the animate dead and a couple of lands. So he doesn't really have a lot of threatening stuff going on in his hand, playing a Nebu that I can then use next turn. And there he is untapping. So now, for example, I could choose to tap down his book and kind of forcing him to make a decision if he wants to draw another card or not. And I can do that before his draw step. So that could be a strategy. 
deciding not to do it, looking at what he's drawn. Another land. So he's got a lot of lands, which is not great, but at least he's got the Gemde Tome, so lands are not that bad. Because he can, you know, use his lands to draw cards, basically. Which is probably what he will do. He first wants to say, I'm going to go and attack, so now I'm waiting for him to animate the factory. But I guess he's not doing that, so I'm just tapping down the queen, passing turn. I'm expecting him to draw a card and then step. Let's first see what I can do. I can use the Nebu, of course. I think he has that one animate dead in hand. That's probably kind of worth it. Okay, going for the maze. I guess maze is more difficult for me to take care of. Then the animate, and there are no really targets in the graveyards now anyway, so... That's probably my reasoning, looking at his hand. Ooh, Wheel of Fortune again. That is pretty sweet. I wonder if he's going to play the wheel. He's played draw sevens in every single game, so I'm expecting you to do it now again, Bernard. And I must say, it's really a lot of fun to play against you because of all those draw sevens. So, ooh, Ancestral Recall going in the bin. Oh, man, that is painful. Losing an Ancestral Recall, one of the best, the best card in my opinion in the game. There is a Darylor, 4-4 four, four Fetty from uh, Fallen Empires. It does have a little downside. Uh, all your black spells cost one black more to cast, but it is a 4-4 four, four for just four mana, one black and three. It's pretty cool. And you do see it in, in, in some old school decks. It can be pretty useful. I know that there are some, uh, some Urnum builds that use it just as some extra beef. Looking at the hand now, oh, this is kind of scary. I guess I want to take care of the Demonic Tutor. Asking how many cards he has in hand. I would definitely go for the Demonic. That's just dangerous. That can be any card in his deck. What am I thinking here? Exactly, using it. I'm, I hope I'm going to say the Demonic. I don't have... Oh, I don't have enough. I'm going to take a risk here. Probably you want to keep those two mana open for a counter spell. And let's see. Okay, the Demonic is there. Demonic has to discard. Then I'm playing a Time Walk. Okay, now I understand. And now I'm going to untap. I'm really finding tons of power, by the way. So that's really something I can't complain about. I've seen... I've casted at least an Accessor Recall or a Time Walk in every single game so far. And what am I going to do? Of course I can use the Nebu again. There's still some dangerous cards there in his hand. I saw Winds of Change. That's kind of annoying. Okay, going for the Disintegrate. Transmute Artifact could have been interesting. Although, I mean, he would have to sack his Gem Day Tome. I don't really think he's going to do that. And would I really mind if he, if he did? Using the Glasses again. There's not a lot in there. Ooh, he's going to play Winds of Change. Mana Drain. Kind of feel like a party pooper with that mana drain, to be honest. It's just cool to draw cards. I like it. I'm, I'm just kind of liking your theme, Bernard, with like Winds of Change, Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune. You know, combining that, of course, with the Dreams. And I'm pointing at my Maze of If, probably going to use that for the Darylor, sending that back, taking three damage, dropping to 15. And again, you know, despite all the little shenanigans I'm doing and the control that I have, as you can see, I'm unable to put any pressure on the board. That is really this recurring theme for my deck. I mean, you do need to attack your opponent. You've got control, that's great, but then you've got to find a way to deal damage. I mean, for example, a phantom monster in this scenario would have been great. Taking care of the transmute artifact... Having that maze, having that icy, so I will only take one damage next turn. If nothing changes. Of course, he does have to strip mine to deal with the maze. I'm expecting him to do that because he's got enough mana. He's going to use his Jamdi Tome on my end step. Going to draw, then I'm going to use the glasses. Let's have a look at what he has. Underworld Dreams there, that's what he just found in another land. So he's not really drawing into much power. Kind of drawing into duds. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapping two here for Felwerstone. I'm expecting him, yeah, to cast his Underworld Dreams. Can I counter this Underworld Dreams? I guess I cannot. Then he's going to strip the maze. This means it's going to get, actually going to get really difficult for me here. I'm going to use, of course, the Icy Manipulator. Tapping the Darylor, taking three, going to drop to 12. And, of course, I'm going to take a damage... 
from that underworld and I'm putting the dice on my deck because it helps me to remind myself that I have that underworld dreams trigger. So I'm going to go to 11. Oh man. Again, despite the fact I've got control, just like in game one, Bernard manages to put a lot of pressure on my life total. Let's see what I can do here. Looking at his hand first, seeing three cards. Am I going to go for discard? I'm on 11. I think I need to... I think I should just let it go. He's got two lands and, and that enchant world. It's not too dangerous. I mean, perhaps I just need my Nebu as a blocker. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar is just like Disrupting Scepter. I can only use it during my main phase. And I have to say, that is really a clause that's super annoying. Like, it's not a card... I cannot use it open to block. Ooh, this is interesting. I'm attacking with Nebu. This really surprises me. Why am I doing that? I mean, he's on 20 or 17. Doesn't really matter much. But I'm pretty low. I'm counting my cards. I'm not playing a Brain Geyser, am I? What do I have? I mean, Brain Geyser is, is not really great with an Underworld Dreams. Passing turn. I wonder what my plan is. Do I have a plan or is it just a bad decision making? Bernard going through his hand. He he probably can't believe either that he actually has a chance still to win this. I think we see Bernard's uh, kit here bringing a toy car. He's like many magic players I play against. He's multitasking. He's being a dad and he's playing magic. And there is a soul ring on the board. Using the ring to animate. Oh man, I'm going to tap Daryl or am I gonna, just going to take three damage again? Or do I have actually something against these creatures so the, the the hard thing about this scenario is i'm playing with a terror right terror is getting me nowhere in this match there are just no targets at the moment gonna drop to eight gonna drop to seven i mean why did i attack with the nebu what was my thought process what went wrong i mean i just got to keep everything untapped i can use my rocket launcher to kill one of his creatures i can use my icy to tap it down I think I can wait until he animates and then I can use the rocket launcher to kill the Sorcerer's Queen and the Mishra's Factory. But of course I'm going to play something out. I hope it's going to be a creature because I need blockers. Then again, okay, looking at his hand first. Playing a Mahamoti, but Mahamoti, I need to take care of the Sorcerer's Queen first. Why don't I right now blow up the Sorcerer's Queen, right? It's only two mana with the rocket launcher. Then he can no longer make my Mahamoti into an O2, because that's what he's going to do right now. It's so, I mean, when you look back at your games and the decisions you make, like, oh man, what was I thinking? Tapping down to Darylor. And now I'm using Rocket Launch. The problem is in response. Okay, he's not doing it in response. Okay, that's at least something. I guess I'm doing it in his end step. He decided not to attack. I mean, he could have attacked with his Mishra's Factory waiting for me to declare blockers and then use the um, Sorcerer's Queen making it an O2 and then basically killing my creature. So I would have to sacrifice my Nebu or my Mamotijin or simply take two damage. Right now I think it's kind of easy. I should just attack with my 5-6 Flyer. Exactly. And I think I should just use my Rocket Launcher. Can I kill the Darylor? Ooh, going for the life total instead. No, changing my mind. He's on seven. I'm still changing. Okay, I'm not quite sure what I want to do. Okay, I am I am putting that on, on his life total. Okay, so I'm putting him on seven. Looking at his hand, there's a copy artifact. It's not going to save him. I'm on six, actually, because of the Underworld Dreams. I'm going to go drop to five next turn. I mean, if he finds direct damage or... But I guess he hasn't found it. Playing copy artifact on my icy manipulator, of course. Oh, he's not doing it. Interesting. I figured out he would do it on my icy manipulator. Gonna drop to five. I can attack him through the air. Actually attack him with both winning this one. Wow. That was kind of an interesting situation. Um, maybe I missed something, but I thought that what Bernard could have done was use copy artifact on my icy manipulator tap down my flyer and that way kind of stay alive a little bit longer but it looks like i've managed to win this one but man i mean i have to say my deck is 
kind of fun to play, but it's very intense. Anyway, uh, I've managed to win my first match here in the Brawl Tournament. If you enjoy this, please make sure to come back next week because then I'll show a different match with two completely different uh, players and two completely different Brawl decks. For now, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, if you like what you see, please leave a like. Um, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it and ring that bell. Okay, um, this is it. Oh, there's one more thing you can do before I forget. I need to promote my Patreon more. I'm not doing that enough. Uh, if you wanna, if you enjoy what I make and if you wanna help me continue making what I make, making these videos for you, please consider becoming a patron on the Timmy Talks Patreon page. It already starts with $1 a month. So it's really, really cheap and it really, really helps me move forward. There are also some perks when you do decide to join the patron. One of them is that you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and you can talk with all the other patrons and you can talk with me and we can talk about magic nonsense. And also I organize a lot of tournaments to thank my patrons and channel members. I do that like every two months, every other month, you know, I organize a tournament like this Brawl tournament. Actually, this was a tournament for my patrons and my channel members. So if you're looking at this, you think, hey, that looks like a lot of fun. Become a patron and you can join those tournaments. We've actually have an Ice Age tournament coming up right now. So if that's something you like, you can consider becoming a patron as well. And another perk of becoming a patron is your name will be mentioned in the fantastic end scroll. And at the end of every video, you see the end scroll. Talking about that, we're almost at the end. So let's go to the end scroll. Ich bin